Uh, we are currently on the line with Lisa M. Dietlin, who is CEO of Lisa M. Dietlin and Associates. She's a philanth- philanthropist, um, advisor, and author. She actually just wrote a blog on the world of giving, U.S. charitable giving in 2011, paints a fascinating picture. So, Lisa, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, happy to be here. Happy good morning, New York. <laughs> well, we're happy to have you. It's a little bit earlier in Chicago, you know, but uh, we're, <laughs> s- we're sending that hot weather to you that we've had for about three days. Oh, right. It's almost <laughs> 90 degrees here. So really I know. Hot. We had that for three days. I- I'm, thank goodness it's getting a little cooler. Uh, I'm out on the golf course tomorrow for one of my nonprofits I work with, Easter Seals, so I'm glad it's going to be a little cooler. Wow. Okay. So since you just mentioned nonprofit, tell us a little bit about what the blog is about, because I know you do a lot of work with nonprofit organizations and such. I do. I have been. My whole life has been about helping people make a difference. You know, I started working with politicians and then nonprofits. And um, for about 50, 60 years, there's been a study done on giving trends in the United States. And what most people are shocked at, because we assume, make assumptions, is that individuals give by far the largest percentage of money away. We assume corporations or foundations do, but when you look at individual giving, both what they give individually, bequests, and what some people give through their foundations, 88% of all the money given away in this country deal pre comes from individuals. So why is it that, you know, in your blog you say that individuals donate more than, like, you know, companies and organizations as a whole? Why is that? Why not just have organizations? Because, you know, it seems like they'd have more money than individuals themselves. <laughs> you would think that, wouldn't you? <laughs> when, you know, when I started in this business, I thought that too. And, and my first job was asking corporations for money. I was in Michigan and asking, you know, GM and Ford and Chrysler and Dow Corning and Dow Chemical. But when you go to a corporation, if they're having a really profitable year, they have more money to give away. But if they're laying off employees, if they're cutting back shifts, if they're like the big three automotive companies were in threat of being closed down, they don't have any money to give away, so they they can't step up to the plate. They they do continue to participate, but it could shift and change in ways that that it doesn't for individuals. You know, Americans I think are the most generous individuals in the world. They're cited as that, and you know, the people have controversy and and comments about that because philanthropy exists in all cultures. But mm-hmm. when you think about the way this country was founded, um, which we're going to celebrate July Fourth here coming up, the founding fathers when they signed that declaration of independence saying, hey, we're going to be free from you, Great Britain. What they basically said is we're not depending on a monarchy or a state religion to provide our hospitals, our workhouses, our orphanages, our churches, our schools. We're going to do it ourselves. So I actually celebrate July 4th as, you know, the start of the nonprofit sector. So I want to talk again about sort of corporate donations Mm -hmm. because you were saying that individuals do give more. And I'm wondering if it's an issue of the laws that exist within the government. I know corporations can receive tax benefits if they give out charitable donations. So could you discuss the system that exists there and what incentives there are as a corporation to donate money? Absolutely. Um, There are tax benefits, but they also exist for individuals. You know, when you make a charitable donation, um, you can deduct it from your taxes that you have to pay to the government. Corporations, it really is aligned with their their mission and um, where they're focused on doing business. But understand that corporations exist for the purpose of providing a profit to its shareholders and its stakeholders. You know, they're about, you know, making a profit, selling back. They're a for-profit business. Individuals, on the other hand, are giving to those causes that are aligned with their heart and with their passion and where they're active. So if you have a a sister that has a kidney disease, Mm -hmm. you're more likely to be aligned with a kidney organization than a corporation that might have 10,000 employees and five of them have sisters that are affected by a kidney disease. You know, that corporation might say, yeah, that's nice, but, you know, we're really invested in... um, expanding our market into the Midwest. So we're going to give to causes and organizations in the Midwest. Or we're really focused on a certain demographic. So we're going to give to Little League baseball teams this year. We're not going to give to, you know, soccer because baseball is, you know, where there's our moms or dads that we're Mm -hmm. trying to target to sell our product to. You know, corporations only give 5% of all the monies given away. So the way I look at it is if if you knew that you could get 88% of your sales 
themselves in one area, which is individuals in this situation. Why would you continue to think that that corporate or that 5% was going to continue to expand and get bigger? You know, corporations do give a lot of money in terms of some marketing and sponsorship, but in no, in no way, even if you added that in, equals what individuals give. Now, I just want to step back a little bit, Lisa, because Mm -hmm. you um, were saying how, you know, a lot of people as individuals donate. But recently, you know, there was um, on Long Island, Island, the jobless rate was up to 7.4 percent. So, you know, it's still showing that our unemployment in the country is still, you know, a little higher than expected. So how would that affect, you know, giving and our giving nature that America has? Well, it's interesting because in the past two years, giving's actually increased. By small percentage points, you know, when you adjust for inflation, it's, you know, 0.9%. Overall, without inflation, 4% it's increased. But Americans step up to the plate, you know, when there's more people hungry because they're out of work and they don't have jobs or they're losing their homes. Americans really step up and say, you know what, I'm going to help my neighbor. I'm going to help my community. They step up to the plate. And it's amazing, you know, while the government says that this you know, recession, the Great Recession ended in the summer of 2009. Um, the last two years, giving has, has increased. Small percentages, but it has. And Americans didn't step away. Even when it decreased still pre- the previous two years in 2008 and 2009, it was by about 1% to 2%. Mm-hmm. So when you think that Americans give away almost $300 billion a year, that's Americans, you know, including corporations and foundations, give away $300 billion a year. That 1% was very, very minor in the two years that it dropped, and now we're back up. All right. Well, we were just sitting with Lisa M. Dietlin, who's the CEO of Lisa M. Dietlin Associates. She's an advisor and an author, and she recently just wrote a blog about charitable giving in America. Thank you so much, Lisa, for joining us. Thank you, Dilpreet. Have a fabulous day. And remember, every day you can make a difference. Just <laughs> look around you. There's a hundred things you could do the Very minute you true. step out your front door. Thank you. Have Take a good care. day. Take care.